Hey, so last week we talked a little bit about the overall organization of the paper. You'll remember that I gave you this, uh, what I called organizational map. Uh, and I emphasized that the paper is inquiry based, uh, that you're asking questions and then doing research and that you're bringing in the claims from the research. And so you guys went ahead and started your projects uh, and I've taken a look at the starts and I've provided comments. This week, I want to add a little, uh, although now I want to shift the focus of the conversation from the organization to cohesion. And so I want to return to the map, uh, although I want to introduce uh, a concept or an idea that I think can help everyone as they consider putting all of this research together. Uh, and I've used the language of cheat code, and I'm actually stealing that language from uh, one of my students in the on-site class uh, because the students suggested when we had this conversation uh, that this uh, acted as a cheat code and it made the whole paper really easy and really straightforward. So hopefully the same thing or the same thinking happens with you. So here's the cheat code. Uh, <clears throat> When I was speaking last week and I was talking about the intro paragraph, I tried to make sure that everybody understood that the introduction doesn't have the thesis and that the introduction really just introduces a single claim. Furthermore, I suggested that you support the single claim in your introduction with real world examples that you develop. In other words, you do not need to bring in research. Uh, and so what happens when you do this is that inevitably you often start to create or craft an image or you bring in a very specific example that serves as support for your claim. This example, however, can also now work throughout the paper. And so I've given a couple of little examples here. Obviously, in the sample paper that we looked at, uh, we can see how the student created this Netflix interface, right? The student constantly returned to this Netflix interface example that she had crafted in the first paragraph. And so as the student was working through her research, she would take the ideas from the research and she would constantly come back to that Netflix interface example. And so each time that new research came in, the student would apply that research to the same example that she had started with in the introductory paragraph. And so we actually then started to think about the Netflix interface in more and more complex ways as we read further and further into the paper. And so here now is that cheat code. I'm suggesting that everybody think of crafting a very specific clear image and or providing a very specific clear example up front in your intro. And then as you work through the paper, you constantly come back to that very same example. And so we see it in the intro, you bring in a question, you do some research, and you then read that research back onto the example. You ask the next question, you do more research, and you apply the research back to that very same example, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And so this example now serves as almost the backbone or the skeleton of the paper. And every time you move out to the world of research, you take those claims and you read them onto the example. And so that really helps to create this cohesion throughout the paper because the reader can see that example and can understand how that example becomes more and more complex as we work through the paper. And so here I've just added a few examples that students in my on-site class developed. Uh, and so for example, I have a student that's doing her project on the artifact of billboards. And in her intro, she creates this very clear image of being stuck in traffic and surrounded by billboards. And so as we work through her paper, she constantly comes back to this image of being in traffic and surrounded by billboards. I have another student uh, who's doing her project uh, on the streetlight, on the artifact of the streetlight. So she creates this description early on in her intro about walking somewhere at night. And so walking to a party at night. And so again, this walking to a party at night becomes the example that she constantly returns to, returns to throughout the paper. 
uh, I have another student who's writing about the artifact of the farmer's market. And she starts her paper by creating this scene of somebody buying a head of lettuce at the farmer's market and in doing so necessarily uh, engaging in conversation. And she contrasts that to what would happen at a typical grocery store. And so now buying a head of lettuce at the farmer's market becomes that very clear description that she constantly returns to throughout the paper. And so here's the cheat code. I suggest that as you start to put the whole paper together, you think of or further develop a very specific image or example in the intro and then constantly return to it. Hopefully that helps you see how you can create cohesion and how the reader can start to understand your overall argument about the artifact as the artifact itself becomes more and more complex as we start to apply more and more claims. Hope that makes sense and I hope that helps. Take care.